If you're watching this, I'm guessing you're one of two kinds of people. One, you had your grocery budget under control and then poof, inflation. Or two, you feel like you really just never had grocery shopping on a budget under control and now uh, you're drowning. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if I was right or if there's actually like a third category I wasn't aware of. But you're here, I'm here, let's talk solutions. Here are some of the things we've either never ever bought in our family or some things that we've recently stopped buying because hello food prices while I'm trying to feed my family of five. <laughs> All right, so the first is going to be the on sale items that are right near the checkout at the grocery store. Those aren't sales. That is the grocery store's little last ditch attempt to be like, please just buy one more thing and give us a little bit more of your money. They usually make it something that's enticing, that looks really good, that a lot of people are going to be interested in, Probably wouldn't buy though without the sign that says it's a sale and then your brain is tricked into thinking, oh, well, I might as well get it now because it's on sale, I'm saving money. No. Any of the things near the checkout are usually not on my list anyway. <laughs> By the way, is this video being helpful yet? You can leave a like if it is. Number two makes me really sad is a uh, deli meat, especially like, oh my gosh, when I was pregnant with my first, I craved roast beef in the worst way. But now I don't really feel like playing $15 a pound for roast beef or $10 a pound for any of the other deli meats. Like that is not in my budget. <laughs> so I'm doing one of two things. One, just we're eating less sandwiches and having more of other foods for lunch. Or two, we're doing more things like cooking a whole ham and slicing that up. We're not doing that super often, but I get really happy when we do. <laughs> the third thing is things like bouillon cubes, stocks, broths, any of the things that you usually would use as a base for a soup or a casserole gravy or something like that. We're not actually buying any of those. Actually, I think I have. I keep this little baggie in my freezer. It's got stuff like ends of carrots, onion, not too much of the skins because then the, the broth is gonna turn all brown, but onions, uh, bits of celery, mushrooms. I usually try to stick to those four things. Otherwise the flavors get all funky. And actually, you know what? What time is it? I actually have to start making that. Get the pot of water, put all the bits and bobs into the soup. Celery is one of those things that it just doesn't taste good if you freeze it, I've found. Maybe some other people have like other ways of cooking celery. I have not found it to be very tasty from the freezer. Some of these bits are good. Ah, that's fine. So yes, chicken stock, turkey stock, vegetable broth. I do all those at home. It's just things you would throw away anyway that completely take out one item of your grocery list, which is cool in my book. <laughs> All right, next is things like Italian seasoning, taco seasoning. Those things come in these very little packets for a couple dollars each. And you usually have, well, maybe, maybe you don't, but it's good to start having something like a spice rack where you've got all of those different kinds of spices that you'd use pretty regularly. So all you have to do is just add them all together. Boom, you've got taco mix. You don't actually need to go and buy the packets. Uh, if you want a recipe for taco mix, I'll just put it in the description below um, because I found some really good ones online that we enjoy in our family. <laughs> Next, salad bar. I was a huge fan of the salad bar when I was a young professional and I was working full time and I would like take my entire lunch break to drive to the grocery store, pick things out from the salad bar, and drive back to school where I was teaching. And then I don't have a lunch break anymore. So I'm like trying to teach and eat my salad at the same time. And it cost me a ton of money. <laughs> the last time I looked at the salad bar prices, it was like seven, $8 a pound for the thing. And when I was young and on the dumber side, I was thinking, hey, if I just fill it full of lettuce, it'll be cheaper because it won't be as heavy. Hillary, when was the last time you saw lettuce at $7 a pound? It isn't. You are not coming out ahead, little Hillary. <laughs> Nothing that I would normally buy that I would get in the salad bar is $7 a pound. Bacon, I only buy it on sale when it's like three or $4 a pound. Lettuce, certainly not $7 a pound. Hard boiled eggs are totally not $7 a pound. Like croutons are definitely, like none of the things there individually are that expensive. And so I was wasting so much money by purchasing the convenience. And it's hard when you're first starting out and you have no idea how grocery shopping works. You're starting at the grocery store, which is already better than starting at DoorDash. <laughs> Step one in the right direction. But if you're looking to save more, getting an idea of how much things usually cost that you usually purchase, is a good place to start. <laughs> yes, next. Things like toilet paper, laundry detergent, tissues. None of those things I buy at the grocery store. I have, I, keep, I check pretty regularly because you know, I have a price book. I did a video on that previously, but I have a price book. I check and compare the prices um, between stores. 
I have never found buying those kinds of paper products, home goods things, never found them to be cheaper at my grocery store, even if I include the coupons that I can acquire. It's always cheaper at Walmart for me, but the state of Maine is getting his very, very first Costco in a couple months, which I am super excited about. And so I'm going to have to check and add a new comparison store into my price book to find out if they're cheaper on things. If you shop at Costco, please help this baby who has no idea about Costco. <laughs> Tell me what to look for. <laughs> I can't wait. Next thing I don't buy at the grocery store is like the little containers of things we buy really frequently. I always opt, as long as I've double checked the prices, I always opt for the bulk versions. Like, uh, here. This is my ground cinnamon. You will see, it is super full. Well, mostly. When did I, maybe cinnamon just never ever expires. <laughs> That's probably not true, but there isn't one listed, so it's gotta be safe. This is obviously more convenient. So I bought this bottle many, many moons ago. Like this is probably a couple years old bottle. And every time it gets emptied, we just take this and pour it in. And now we have the convenient size, but I paid the bulk size because we go through a ton of cinnamon. <laughs> Other things included in this category are like the little packets of oatmeal, because we go through a ton of oatmeal, little like one, two, three pound bags of flour. I'm always gonna opt for the biggest bag I can find in the store. Anything that's going to last at least a couple months in my pantry, if I don't get to it, always try to buy it in bulk. Second from the last, beverages. We don't purchase anything that's a beverage in the grocery store. No sodas, no energy drinks, no sweet tea, no salsa. Beverages are really expensive. I know this one's hard for a lot of people. You really love your, your favorite whatever kind of beverage. Um, and I've never had to deal with weaning myself off of a love of like sweet beverages especially, so I'm, I'm not gonna tell you, just do it, it's not hard. I've never done it, so I don't know how hard it is. We are really able to keep our grocery budget low because there's no beverages in our, in our budget line. All right, and the last one, which kind of goes against everything else I've talked about, I no longer buy whole heads of garlic. Like, this is the last one we bought like many months ago, and it's just sitting on our counter windowsill because we have realized that if a recipe calls for garlic, we will either just not bother cutting it up because it just gets sticky and it's just a hassle, or we'll just make the dish without garlic at all. And then it just doesn't taste as good and I'm not as interested in cooking that particular thing ever again. So instead, minced garlic in water or oil or whatever they are, you know. We have found that if we buy the convenience, especially for something like garlic especially, I don't know why, we just find it super inconvenient to cut garlic. I'll cut any other vegetable, but garlic is weird. We find that if we buy the convenient version of the thing, we are so much more likely to eat at home, cook at home, and then not do things like DoorDash, which are far more expensive. I talked about this in my video on 50 frugal food hacks. Use the just go one step further principle. If you can't go from growing your own vegetables and cooking them, everything from scratch, everything is from scratch, go one step back. Can you handle that step? So for us, cooking at home with the added convenience of pre-minced garlic, that's worth it for us. We'll do a lot more cooking at home and we buy the huge jars, so we, you know, better, again, better than buying the little ones. So there you go. If you haven't seen my video on my 50 frugal food hacks video, I'll put that one up for you right now so you can check it out. And uh, yeah, bye YouTube. Little bits of parsley, cause it is really good.